Hey there, I heard that you were waiting for React server components to drop in V10 React Router. Well, they have, and let's talk about it. So yesterday, the React Router team published this article going over React Router and React server components and the path forward. I'm not gonna go through the article in detail. What's important to know is they've decided to add it on the data level. So if you don't know, React Router has three modes and that's framework, data and declarative. And you can go to the picking a mode section and read which one is which. But what's important is that the data level is the one you create by creating the browser router and then providing it to the router provider and then rendering your route. So it's not the framework specific one, it's even a lower level API and they've added React server components there. If I go back to the article, it has a lot of examples and how you can use it and what you can do with it, but we're not gonna talk about that now. What we are gonna talk about is the fact that if I scroll down, we can go over the bottom line here, which says that React router is getting simpler because React itself is doing most of the heavy lifting. So they are shifting a lot of logic to React itself and not doing it in React router land. So that's the gist of the article. But what we're gonna do today is not to read, but actually test it out because they have a ready to go demo with Vit. So we're gonna go over that and play around with it and see how we like it. So let's do that. All right, so I've set up this project and it's basically the template that they have for you to test with uh, React Server Components for Weed. And we're gonna go over it together. I'm gonna explain some stuff and we're gonna see how it works. So the first thing that's important here is unlike the framework mode, in React Router, you can see that this uses the build command and the dev command from Weed. So there is no custom React Router stuff going on here. It's just Weed. So Weed builds it and Weed runs your development server. And also you have your start command and the start command runs a custom server. So what's important to understand is if you want to use React Server components, you have to have a server. So how that works is you just start this server here and the server is located here and it's pretty basic express stuff. So you import express and compression, you create the request listener using M Jackson's node fetch server, and then you import the build from the dist. So because this is supposed to start the app when you deploy it to production or whatever, as soon as you build your project, you're going to have this available and it's gonna be imported into the server file and consumed by your server. And we're gonna skip the assets part, that doesn't matter, also the compression part, this doesn't matter either. Basically, this is all you need. So it creates a request listener and it passes in the build that you imported from your build. And this is all it takes to have an RSC server running. And then if you open up the source here, you can see that it has three entry files. The first one is the entry.ssr. So this is used by your server to generate the HTML. And as you can see, it has a bunch of imports from Vite.js plugin RSC and React DOM and also React Router. So all of these things work together to create the uh, generate HTML function. And basically what this does is it calls route RSC server request from React Router and then it takes the recurrent request, the fetch server that calls the actual React server, and then this readable stream that's used to stream the data from your server to the client, and also this render HTML function that looks a lot like your entry.server from before, where you just return a render HTML to readable stream and use the RSC static router from React router. And there is a few shenanigans going on with Vite and the vtrsc plugin but we don't care about that right now and then you have your entry.rsc part where you generate the rsc server and the only interesting part in this and the only part that you're actually probably going to understand without going deep into the source code of react router react and the v plugin so routes are not static anymore and they can be defined at runtime. So why is this awesome? 
Well, if I open this file up, you can see that you can define your routes at runtime. And the cool thing is because this is called here and you have the current request, you could pass in the request and then consume it here. And basically you could do something like this. So construct headers is equal to new headers from request and then const custom header is equal to headers get x custom header and then based on this for example define the route so maybe when this custom header is present you don't want the user to see the home route or you want him to see the about route and sometimes you want to do something else this is really useful for something like if your users need to see certain info based on their account or domain or something like that. So that's really cool. And this doesn't have to be a custom header. You could also extract the user or the session from the request. So that's also cool. And if I go back to the entry, you can use that here and the final custom route. So that's really cool. And that's the addition I'm really excited about surprisingly because that's something that they glossed over but that's really cool and then you have your entry browser that basically interprets your RSE code and knows what to do with it and then you create the readable stream again and you start the transition and you hydrate the application and it's pretty similar to what React Router was doing before and from what I understood these three entry files are gonna be there instead of the entry server and entry browser from before but I'm not really sure about that so don't hold me to that and yeah, that's all the setup you need. So if I go to the vid config, you can see that this vid config does not use the React Router plugin. So it's not React Router framework mode, but rather it's the data mode. And if you look at it, it only has the Tailwind plugin, the React plugin, and then the RSC plugin. So this takes three entries. So the client RSC and the SSR. So that's what we just looked at. And it's coming from this. So import RSC from vite.js plugin RSC plugin. And this is the vite implementation of RSCs. And this is what's really important to get all of this working without much hassle. And once you run your vite server, and we're going to do that right now, and we're going to open it. And I've already prepared some example and I'm gonna go over it with you. Before we look at these logs, I'm gonna lower this and we're gonna open the root file. So this file is your equivalent of the root ESX in framework mode. So this is just in data mode. So data mode and framework mode have become eerily similar with these changes and they almost have the same setup structure now because of the entries and also the root ESX and the layout export and everything. But what's important for you to understand here is you have your layout that defines the layout. And as, as you can see, the client layout is imported from the client file, which is this one. And here you have the use client and then you define your client components and do whatever you want with them. And then you have your default export, which is the outlet from React Router. So you can render whatever you want in this layout, for example, the home and the about pages that are in this template. And as you can see, they're very simple. But what's really cool about this is if you look at the log here, it says fetched users and it logs the users. So keep in mind, this is a server component and this should log the users fetched from fetch users. And this uses the use server directive. It imports the users from the JSON file on the server and then returns them here. And then in the route, we log this and also we pass it to the client layout. So in the client layout, we also log these users and this renders the layout. So why is this so cool? If I save this and if I bring up the logs, you can see that the fetched users in the server route component gets logged, but that's not all. If I switch over to the browser and I open up the console and I go to console, you can see that we actually get console logs 
from the server and from the client. So whenever it says server here, you can see that it's logged from VJS plugin RSC and it tells you what is happening at console logging on the server. And then if it has no prefix here, it means it happened on the client. So as you can see here, you have this array and it's logged in the client TSX file. So this is an example of full RSCs working in React Router. And if I close the dev tools and I look at this home page, what we can do is go to the editor, go to the client layout, and then in the children here underneath this, we're going to say users map user and we're going to do a simple div tag and we're going to do username and we're going to save this. And now if I scroll down here, we can see that the update happened and let's check out the browser now. So in the browser, we can see the list of names and if I open up the inspect console and go to the network tab and I refresh it, we get to all of these files and we're going to just delete them and we're going to do navigation. So if I go to the home page, you get the RSC component for the root and it's in this crazy preview that you can't really see. But if I go to the console, you can see if I clear this and go from the about page, the server component re rendered and then it was sent to the client and then this was logged on the client. And this is pretty cool. And that's all it takes for you to implement RSCs in your React Router applications. And this can be done with anything. And this is really easy to set up and you can play around with it yourself. And yeah, I think it's amazing. And I also like that the plugin actually tells you where the log came from. So you know if a component rendered on the server or it was rendered on the client. So that's also cool. And yeah, I'd love for you to let me know what you think and explore this demo yourself. You can find it in the article that we just talked about. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.